Um, first slide here, some of you may have seen on one previous presentation, and, and it is a strong warning today. You'll see the little guy here has got his fingers crossed because you can claim that statistics prove anything. Um, in the past, when I've been given presentations for the ISBSG, uh, I've had a lot of statistics, I've had a lot of data to work with. Today's presentation doesn't have stats. It's, we simply don't have enough data to do detailed statistical analysis. However, what we have is some data that provides some information that I hope will be useful to you, and, and it will give us something that I believe we can learn from. So it's important to understand that we're not, we're not giving strong rules here. We're not basing things on thousands of projects. So the webinar, why did I come up with this? I decided to have a dig around in the company's timesheet data. That that's the data that our consultants record in order so that we speak on for the time we spend. And just to see what we could learn from the implementation of ERP packages, which is what Phoenix Software does. It's a Microsoft Navision Dynamics Nav Goal Partner, and it spends its time implementing Dynamics Nav and um, add-ons for, for clients throughout Australia, but occasionally um, in, in parts of Asia or in New Zealand. So that's a little bit of background. And, and so once I started to dig around, I, I did a series of analysis um, of the breakdown of time that we spent on these package implementations using the history data from our timesheet recording. And then I looked to report on the performance of these projects so that perhaps we could learn something. And today I want to share with you what's been revealed by this work. So the objective of the next 40 minutes or whatever it will take us, is to explore the lessons learned from analyzing this performance data, and, and it is of ERP projects, and hopefully point out some of the areas of risk, where the time is spent, and how to estimate the likely cost of projects. Now, my presentation today is obviously point of view of a company implementing a, a, ERP projects for its clients. However, if you're a prospective client of such an implementation, the, the things that we can learn today would still apply. What we'll end up with are questions that you could ask prospective partners to ensure that uh, yourself that they're on the right track and know what they're doing. If you are in the business of implementing an ERP system, then that I put forward today, I think will be quite useful and strong. So the key areas here are areas of risk, where the time's gone, and are there any things we can do to usefully improve our estimation? Our agenda, first of all, I'll cover why on earth you want to do this in the first place. A bit of background on the implementation themselves because it's important you understand this data. I won't obviously develop it here. It'll be developed in one of the very early slides. And then some of the challenges that I'm sure some of you are aware of of collecting good data. I think I've had comparing apples with apples in just about every presentation I've given over the years because this is the key factor. You, you must ensure that when you're comparing data from various projects, you're doing a comparison, um, as we put here, apples and apples, otherwise you're going to get spurious results. This next item, the tasks in an ERP implementation, this became one of the key issues. It sounds very simple. Um, in our case, it took some refining. You think you know what the tasks are, but then after a few implementations, you learn quite a bit more and you're able to refine your standard list. And the standard list will be very important, as you'll see. Uh, and then we'll look at the, how we work out the breakdown of the time spent, such as on reporting this data and the results. Um, and then if we can use anything that we've learned in the way of the percentages of time spent on the tasks to help with our 
estimation. And then I've got a couple of slides at the end with, with what I think may be helpful recommendations for you. What was all this about for Fennec? Well, being a software implementation company, we want to estimate our projects accurately. And estimating an ERP project is completely different to estimating um, a development project. It is so that we can win business, we can deliver on time and within budget, we can make a profit so that we're here for another 30 odd years. The way that we could do this is analyze what we've done in the past, hopefully learn from that history so that we can improve what we do in the future. I'll give you a bit of background. So what you see are the results of four analyses that I've done since about 2009, roughly at yearly intervals, five projects that were completed in the previous period. At analysis, one of the things we had to do was refine the task structure. We found that not every ERP implementation that we did was using the same task definitions. So time was being recorded against a task called X or a task called Y. And, and when I came to do the analysis, it was, it was not very easy to compare the projects apples for apples, the classic um, comment. So we refined our, our task structure, but we also went back and looked at our proposal and our quotations. I'll that in a little more detail shortly. So the task structure part of it was what tasks we would record our time against during an implementation. And then the provision of guidelines so, so that our consultants would understand what the tasks meant. In other words, what time, the guidelines for what time they would record against this list of tasks. So then time went by and I did another analysis a year or so later. And this time, Arguments had certainly meant that it was a little easier to, well, quite a lot easier to compare apples with apples. And we made improvements again to the way time is recorded, and we further refined our proposal and our quotation document. I'll explain that to you shortly. And for the third analysis, uh, we introduced more rigorous time allocation guidelines, and we involved the staff in all these things. I gave a presentation to each analysis, and then the staff were able to discuss that and come up with ideas for improvement. First analysis goes back to, 19, to 2000. Oh, sorry, I flipped over one slide. I shouldn't have done the same heading. You need to, this is important for you to understand so that you can make your own judgment about what follows. We're very lucky. Um, well, there's, a bit, there's a, a, some luck and a lot of planning. We have a very stable team of consultants with very low staff turnover. We take graduates from a specific university here in Melbourne, Australia. Generally, we take them. At the end of their course, we're able to train them and they tend to stay with us for a long time. It's important to understand that because if you're in an environment where you have a high staff turnover, you're going to get um, a different set of results because people are not getting the opportunity to do many projects and improve as they go. I think we have reason.